Hello, everyone, and welcome to a long awaited new episode of Cookie Time. I am here with the CEO of RJ himself, Oyster Catcher 7. Please introduce yourself. Hello, I am I am indeed Oyster Catcher 7. I don't know if I am the CEO of Pem RJ, but that seems to be what people know me for most, which I'm thankful for. But uh, it's not a title I made, but it's a title I'm given. <laughs> so, hello. <laughs> So my first question for you is, how? What's the name Oyster Catcher? How? Where did it come from? Uh, well, kind of a weird origin. I remember it came from when I was uh, a kid, and I made like a PSN account. I made like my first online account anywhere, pretty much for the PlayStation Network. Um, and I couldn't really think of a username at the time. Um. That's so. <laughs> uh, this is already a weird answer. Uh, my dad suggested the name because an oyster catcher is uh, a bird, like a marshland bird that lives nearby, like lives locally. Uh, that w he kind of liked at the time. It's like, oh, why don't you call yourself that? And I'm like, sure. And then I put a seven at the end just because uh, uh, I like the number seven. And then when. I, I kind of stuck with that name. I don't know why, because it's kind of a... It's not a boring name, but it's just kind of a okay sort of name. Um, but I kind of stuck with it uh, when I... When I started on my... Uh, when I started my uh, Fur Affinity account as well, I, I used that name as well um, a little bit later on. And sa sadly, I, I wanted to become something else, but like as soon as my like photomorphs started catching on, on E621, they just referred to me as Oyster Scratcher 7 on there. So I was like, okay, I guess this is my name now. Uh, <laughs> it was just something that was kind of, you know, a filler, basically, and then it kind of stuck. I guess like most names, it just kind of stuck. <laughs> well, that's a beginning. But it, oh, sorry, go ahead. My original, like, persona actually was an Oyster Catcher bird. I don't think I have any art of them. Like, my original bird persona, but then I changed it because I wasn't really... I didn't like being a bird sona, I guess. <laughs> uh, I, I mostly just felt like... I mostly just felt like I, was, I had to be one simply because that was my username, and I was like, fuck it. <laughs> um, and it, it's kind of appropriate because nowadays, even without the uh, bird sona, because I remember someone, like, a couple people made a joke. like, oh, did you, did you catch many oysters today? And I was like, oh, this is kind of vague, vague, vaguely lewd, so it's appropriate. I find it appropriate now, since I'm a, since I'm a not safe work artist. It's kind of appropriate now. What happened to your uh, bird OC? But also, what happened to the deer, the red deer boy? He was around, <laughs> but then he kind of vanished? Um, no, he's still around. Uh, I just don't really draw him as much, I guess, because, like, uh, I tend to feel kind of, because he's a fursona, I guess I feel kind of weird to, it almost feels like weird to have like a sort of self-insert, it kind of feels kind of self-inserty. There's nothing really wrong with it, but I don't know, I always feel weird when I do it. I get like really giggly when I try to insert him into something. I'm just like, ooh, that's so weird. Um, and also I, I tend to like draw licensed characters more often than like OCs, so like... I feel especially weird putting in an OC with the licensed character, so that's why you don't really see him as often anymore, unless I happen to pair him with another OC of mine. Oh, for those who don't know, could you explain uh, to the people what a photomorph is, and also, why did you stop doing it? Something that a lot of people tend to ask about, why did you start to stop the photomorphs? Okay, so, a photomorph is uh, basically, at least in the way I did it, uh, was basically just taking like a real life photo of someone, um, usually like a model or whatever, and um, what I did was take an anime character's head, uh, basically pasted it on to the human body, and then colored in the human body and added a little cool fluoro texture uh, to make them look like, to make it look like the animated character is that person. So uh, yeah, I I morph stuff into a photo. It's about as simple. It's about what it sounds like, but I mainly did it for like like I I know people did it before, 
to literally just like, oh, I'm going to add like an animal snout onto this human face, and it looks really weird. Uh, I just I just did it with cartoon characters, and for the reason why I stopped, um, uh, I guess I just got bored. Um, I I I I got kind of bored doing them because it was getting kind of it was becoming kind of a hassle to look for like body images to use, and I kind of felt like. I wasn't really getting any better at it. Like, the, if you could see my earlier Photoshop, you could see, like, oh, yeah, it's a definite change in quality from, like, his later ones. But I felt like I was at a point where it's like, okay, I'm not really, like, getting better, really. Um, and I kind of enjoyed drawing more. Um, so I just finally decided to, like, retire it and move on to just drawing, like, digital illustrations and things like that. Also, you abandoned another thing. You used to do audio edits. Particular oh, God. Audio edits. <laughs> oh, we're going, we're, we're going way back into my backlog here. Uh, yeah, so uh, for those who don't know, um, I am into Vor. Uh, no, no judging. I also cringe at it. But um, it, I, in my, my early, 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 early days, uh, before I did Phonomorphs even, I used to do these, like, VOR audio edits. Because I remember there was, like, a, tr a new trend of, like, people making, like, these, like, first-person, like, audio ASMR tracks, basically, of, like, the viewer getting vor or whatever like that. Uh, notable artists include, like, I think it's pronounced, like, Jesk. Jesk. <laughs> I don't know. how uh, G-E-S-C-K-E. I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he was, like, one of the pioneers of it, basically. Um, and I was like, hey, I want to do that. And I think I had, like, Audacity at the time. I used Audacity for audio editing. And I just I just gave it a shot and went surprisingly well. So I made a few more. And then I was like, yeah, I like these. And then, I, I don't know, I think I got tired of that real quick. <laughs> um... And then from then on, I think I moved on to Photomorphs because I I, uh, I I think I just wasn't as into Vore anymore. Like, I was I was super into it for a while, and that's why I made all those. Uh, but then I was like, eh, whatever. I want to draw. I want to Photoshop breasts. <laughs> you went from doing audio edits to Photoshopping titties and drawing. Yes. But the, the one thing, major consistency across all of them was uh, the thickness for the thickness. Where did you get that from? Um, I mean, where did we get any of our tastes, really? Uh, I can't say I know. I think if I were to really theorize, um, uh, you know how, like, when there's, like, a bully character or something in, like, a cartoon or a show or whatever, and they're usually very large, like, much larger people, or, like, there would be, like, some sort of or, like, there'll be some sort of, like, villain or something like that. Some sort of villain in, like, usually a girl-orientated uh, show or movie. And the villain would be very, like, thick. And uh, a lot of times they'd also be kind of flirtatious or, like, very, like, dominating of the room and stuff like that. Um, I guess I got it from there. I, I can't really say why particularly I latched onto that. <laughs> sort of aspect, but uh, I think that might have been where it came from. I think a good example would be uh, I think a good example would be you know Ursula from The yeah. Little Mermaid? She's yeah, like she's like peak she's like the peak thick villain lady material in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and a few other artists are huge fans of Ursula. That's where I've started for a lot of people. But Oh god. I, yeah. Oh man. She she's she's quite the quite the thickness uh, fetishizer too as well but you also mentioned that you were well you gained the title the CEO of RJ where did that hmm. start um well I think it, it's it was kind of a it was kind of a very slow slow rise to glory I guess you could call it um, but I think he only became popular because I basically forced everyone to look at her. <laughs> uh, but she was actually involved in one of my earliest photomorphs. Um, uh, and it was back when I put in a lot more effort into my photomorphs as well. Because, like, back then, 
I would like put in the whole background and stuff and like, oh, I'm going to add this lens flare here and stuff like that. And it's like a picture of her. Uh, um, I, I keep calling her because often I kind of forget that RJ is originally a dude. Um, but it's just kind of her chilling in the lake in the forest. And it's like really pretty. And like that was the first photomorph. That was the first ever image of Femme RJ. <laughs> and I think, I don't know, for some reason I did it again. Because I'm a really big fan of the movie Over the Hedge. Um, and... I think I was like, I think this was before I realized I was bisexual. So I was like, oh, I need to find characters to photomorph. Oh, well, what if I just take this character and make them a girl? And then I did it again. Uh, and then I think the second morph is when I started implementing the whole large breasts thing, like specifically with her. Um, and then I did another one. And then I did another one. And then I did another one. <laughs> and then I did another one. <laughs> and they kept getting bigger every time. Um, uh, and I think I did it so often that she kind of, or at least I forced her to be a staple of my, of my work. It's like, oh, you're the guy who makes the femme RJ. It's like, hell yeah, I am. <laughs> and then nowadays people actually do know me for my femme RJ. So I guess I'm happy for that, um, that people are like catching on to something that I do. That's such a specific niche. I guess it's because it's people who have made... Like, not not their entire uh, not their entire art galleries of, of it, but like they do have like this gimmick almost where like they make they take a popular male character and make them a woman or something like that. Like I know there's um, I know there's one artist that like uh, is well known for like drawing loads of femme Sonic. Uh, I forgot their name. It kind of slipped my mind now, but I think they like um, they made loads of like like very like bimbofied a uh, bimbofied uh female sonic and i guess this is mine <laughs> i guess fem rj is mine thing <laughs> and uh, uh, it was kind of weird because at first i didn't even seem to let the critics uh i didn't seem to let the critics like hold me back because like there's uh you know e621 is infamous for having uh degenerate mean comments for no reason uh, mm -hmm. and a lot of them would be like oh this is freaking weird all I can hear is Bruce Willis's voice coming out of that big booby lady, and I'm like, whatever. I'm gonna keep doing it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I guess I am the CEO of MRJ. I haven't. I've only seen one, maybe two pieces of fan art of her, but people still seem to come to me and be like, "Hey, you're the fan RJ guy." <laughs> you mentioned Isek. And Perfinity, and I know you have a deviant art and a bunch of other stuff. You've been drawing for quite a while now, uh, so you probably, if anyone, have the most to say about it. What's your favorite platform, and what are your experiences with each platform? Do you have like a specific one that you hate, or a specific one that you like, or etc.? Well, well, it is true. I have been drawing for a while. I think it's it's only like in the past like three three year or so years that I thought, hey, I want to like draw as my my career. I'm I'm not really making it my career anymore. Like I'm still doing it. I'm still enjoying doing it. Um, I just I'm not. I don't think I'm like gonna pursue it like as a full time thing. However, I am gonna like keep drawing. So like, don't worry. That doesn't mean I'm gonna like stop anytime soon. Um, but I'd say my f for each platform kind of has its own thing. I was on DeviantArt first, I think. Oh no, I was on Affinity first. Um, and it's. Uh, you know, I, I kind of like it. It's fairly simple. Like, some people call it dated, even, just because it hasn't really updated. It hasn't really caught up with all the other things. But I think that's kind of good, because it's kind of less complicated. Uh, and, you know, I get, like, you know, you can post journals. You can get comments right there. And, like, usually the people in the comments are, like, are pretty okay. They're pretty like, oh, this is great. And, like, there's no one really mean. A lot of people say they, like, have encountered mean people on For Affinity, but I've never really got that. I guess I was lucky. Um... And I'd say for, for, I think I got on DeviantArt next. I think I kind of liked that more in terms of, like, the UI they use and stuff like that. Like, all the features, like, oh, you can edit your, you can, like, customize your all your stuff and, like, organize your stuff much better than for Affinity. Because for Affinity is kind of bare bones almost. Um, But I think I kind of stopped posting there because, one, they don't allow any of the hardcore stuff, so it's kind of a shame that I can't post any, like, hard dick or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And also, I, I, I don't mean to, like, judge, but, like, a lot of the people there kind of creeped me out. Um, I don't know what it was. Like, DeviantArt is kind of also stereotyped for having those, like, kind of weirdos um, on, on there. Like, uh, so those are kind of, like, creepy people. Like, kind of vaguely creepy people. It's not really a specific sort of creepy. It's just kind of vaguely. And I just started getting those, like, uncomfortable comments on my stuff. And it's just like, I don't really like this. Um, and then recently, uh, recently they had like that real, they had like that massive, like rework of their, of their site. Like all the UI is completely different now. And I was kind of thinking, you know what? I barely post here anyway, so I'm just going to leave. Uh, I'm, I'm going to like bail. I, I, I deleted my account on DeviantArt. I told people where to find me elsewhere. Uh, but I was leaving just cause I kind of hated, <laughs> started hating DeviantArt a bit. Um, as for E621, uh, it's a good way to archive images. You know, you have them all in HD. Uh, you have loads of tags. Um, people can easily find your stuff on there if you just put it on the right tags and stuff. Uh, the only downside is that the people are mean. Like, the the people on E621 are really mean, self-entitled, and sometimes, again, creepy for no reason. Uh it, it's kind of better these days. I don't really see it that much these days, but, like, back in, like, when I first started, people were, like, relentless. People were, like, really mean. And uh, just, like, a funny short story, I remember I was almost having a feud with the community because I think I made, uh, like, a Rocky Raccoon photomorph or something in the early days, and, like, people were really mean about it. Like, they made wrote me comments that were saying this looks like crap or something like that. I was, like, I was basically, like, fuck you guys. I'm going to make a spike photomorph <laughs> where it's just like <laughs> rock a raccoon, but like his dick and balls are like right as close to the camera. It's like, here, take this, you fuckers. And then everyone like hated it. <laughs> so I was in a bit of a feud with E621 for a while. So I think ever since then, I was kind of like, okay, yeah, fuck this place. Even though I still post there because it does give you, it does give you good publicity because a lot of people from all around go on there. Um, but don't read any comments ever. Um, and then I'm fine. I'm on new. I'm on new grounds now, uh, by the way, as well. Uh, which is kind of weird because I remember I used to go on their loads for all their flash games and stuff, and now I'm posting my own stuff there. Um, and I usually post my finished stuff there. I never post my sketches. Uh, but uh, I'm. Get I seem to be getting attention there because people. People who are. People are kind of posting my stuff for me on E621 now. Um, and a lot of them source Newgrounds as the place they found it, so it's like, I guess I'm getting some publicity there, so that's good. But I'd say that for Affinity is still my favorite, simply because it's, it's just it's just simpler to use, I guess, and the people are nice. Yeah, that's definitely true. I've had experiences as well on uh, DeviantArt and E621, and I haven't been drawing <laughs> that long, so it hasn't changed that much. No. But, so, I remember you made a post a while ago, well, not too long ago, but like a month ago, maybe, about people are telling you you need to draw your eyes bigger. But I was going to ask you, other than that, have you have like what kind of art struggles have you had throughout your long and storied history of art? Well, it is it is true that I have it is true that I have been drawing eyes rather small uh, these past few years. I think it was just a natural thing that I did because I kind of go for this like semi realistic style. Um, but then, like, when I asked everyone for art criticism, it's like, oh, what do you think, what do you think I can improve on about my art style and stuff? A lot of them actually mentioned that the eyes could be bigger, uh, so they could be, like, kind of more expressive, because they look kind of weird otherwise, and I actually tried it on, like, some newer art, and it actually works, it actually, like, on my, on my, on my newer Femme, Femme RJ art, I made the eyes a little bit bigger, and it actually does make quite a difference in terms of how, like, appealing it looks i guess because she does have quite beady eyes otherwise um but in terms of like art struggles oh my god i, I get art block all the time um and I, I i tried figuring out loads of ways on how to like shade stuff because i was never really the best at shading it's not that i couldn't get the lighting accurate or anything it was just because i wasn't really good at it in general um and like if you kind of look at my older art, if you look at my older drawn art, you could see sometimes I don't do it at all. And then there was like a phase, like a short phase, where I tried doing like a cell shading sort of thing, where it's just like two-tone, like, shading. And it looked awful. 
Uh, I was not very good at it. And then I kind of just gave up and I was like, fuck it, I just want, I just want flat colors. Um, and then just recently I kind of discovered the beauty of the airbrush. Um, so, uh, from then on I was kind of like, okay, I'll just use like an airbrush and then use a dark color for like the deepest like crevices and stuff. Um, and that's why I've been using it. That's kind of become another staple because I feel like it kind of adds like a nice kind of glowing sort of like cozy look to my art almost. And there was loads of times where I I kept having I kept having to experiment with like how how bright should my highlights be and stuff like that. And like obviously I had a struggle with angles and stuff you probably noticed that a another criticism was that like a lot of my poses are kind of stiff or sometimes the angle is a little bit bland and that's just because i uh even though i know i'm pretty okay i'm not that good <laughs> at the same time at drawing so a lot of the time it's very simple poses or very simple angles um very rarely you would get like a low shot or a high shot or whatever very rarely it would usually just be kind of stiff so like recently i've been trying to like experiment with different poses and i tend to i tend to struggle with proportions i uh so i use i kind of semi cheat i use design doll which is a 3d like po modeling model posing program which people you which people can use for, as like an art reference and you're able to like edit the bodies and everything so like you can make them really thick or whatever um, and it's a really big help for, like, getting the basic shapes down, um, uh, and then kind of adding on top of it. Um, like, I, I don't really stream anymore, but I have, uh, people have seen me, how I did it. I, I kind of somewhat trace over the screenshot of the design, design doll I take, but then, like, add my own shapes to make it more natural, because design doll itself only goes so far. Like, it still, it still looks like a mannequin, like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make a convincing human or anthro um and then i started doing this whole weird thing with like colored line work because i because people were saying that the black black all the constant black line work makes it look a little bit uh makes it look a little bit harsh so i started putting in colored line work and that's why i kind of have uh the line works either kind of slightly brown or slightly red or kind of varies but it's 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 amazing how long my art journey has been and it's still going um and I remember a lot of people even said that they really enjoy following me, not because not just because they like my art, but because they like seeing it improve over time, uh, which is very which is very wholesome and heartwarming and very encouraging, I must say. Um, and I remember there was even a point where like I stopped drawing tails because they were getting in the way, kind of <laughs> being annoying, and people didn't like that apparently. I didn't think it was I didn't think it was that bad, but people apparently did not like it. Um, uh, Bush, it's been quite a journey going from, like, <laughs> it was quite a transition, because I used to draw on paper, I know I'm kind of rambling a bit, but I, I used to draw on paper, uh, and post those, like, post poorly done scans of those, and, uh, then I was like, you know what, I'm gonna commit to drawing, so I'm gonna get an art tablet, and then I have an art tablet, and it's the same one I've been using for, like, three years, uh, because it's simple and it works, um, and... My God, the transition from from paper to digital was disastrous. <laughs> but I kept going because I'm damn well persistent, I guess. Um, but yeah, so many of the usual struggle struggles a digital artist would have, I suppose. <laughs> Experimenting all the time. Yeah, hell yeah. I definitely know how that feels. For me, the transition <laughs> wasn't as bad from like uh, paper to digital. For me, it was really quick, like, because I used the computer equipment so often, I was just like, figure it out, I have it, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I figured that out okay. But I was going to ask, because you've been drawing for quite a long time, so it might be a hard question to ask, but do you have, like, a favorite drawing of yours? Oh, <laughs> boy. Uh, I need to, like, that's something I've been meaning to do for a while, is just kind of compile my favorite art my favorite pieces are that's kind of hard to say like because like you said i've been drawing for a while so there's a lot of stuff um i think it's it, yeah it's really hard to say because i kind of have 
I kind of struggle to look on my older arc because I'm one of those guys who like cringes at everything they do like five minutes five minutes ago. Um, so it's kind of difficult to decide. Let me, let me pick out like a quick one real quick or something like that. Just one that's like one real quick out of the blue. Uh, I guess I, one of my most recent ones that I'm really proud of was the one of the mom from Turning Red turning into who turned into a red panda. Just because it was, like, the first time I experimented with, like, underside lighting. And I just really like how all the colors turned out. Um, so that's probably something I'm really proud of, like, very recently. But I think, like, uh, I'm going to, like, narrow it down a bit. Uh, I think a sketch I'm really proud of. Because, the, like, there's, there's full drawings I'm proud of, but then there's also sketches I'm proud of. Uh, is the one of that... Do you remember that cat lady from the... Uh, come and learn with Pippi trailer who's mm -hmm. like a thick villain lady I remember I sketched her and even though I didn't really build on it it was just a sketch uh, people really loved it and looking back at it now it actually is so good like I don't usually gloat over my own art but oh my god it actually is so good um, but that's probably my most favorite sketch and then yeah the turning red picture is my most my, at least my most favorite recent picture uh I'm sure I'll have an actual answer for you later on. <laughs> but that's my favorite for now, anyway. I noticed you have it listed, but you don't really, well, at least from what I noticed, you don't really, like, uh, ex like advertise it as much. Do you have a Patreon? Do you use it that often? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I constantly use my Patreon. I, I, I kind of try to promote it when I can. I don't try to be too obnoxious about it, because I know someone constantly promoting, hey, give me money is would be annoying a lot of the time so i kind of don't promote that much i promote a little bit but i don't do that much i do use a patreon i do use patreon i have like 40 patrons i think um which is pretty decent uh nothing to make a living off of but like that's fine um they're all i love them all so if you patrons are watching i love you all so much uh you you are like the ultimate supporters i love you so much but uh, I guess I just, I do use Patreon, and I, I post all my sketches and, and, like, finished art there, and I keep it there for a month or so. Um, I'm kind of thinking of reducing it, maybe, like, oh, two weeks or something, because maybe people don't want to wait a month, that might be annoying. And I noticed that, like, artists, like, Secure Pun, I think is his name, the guy who draws the big werewolf lady, um, uh, I think he, like, posts stuff, like, a week early, and then posts it public. Uh, but patrons can see all the stuff early, and that's kind of my goal here. They just—it's just that my patrons can see stuff early, and then occasionally, occasionally, vote in a poll on what I should draw next if I remember. Um, but yes, I do indeed have a Patreon plug. Uh, plugging my—I <laughs> I, would—I would have merch if 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 I knew if I knew the means to make stuff. <laughs> FemRT merch. <laughs> So we've been to the past of your drawing, but what about the future? Do you have any future plans that you know of that you would like to share? Oh, like uh, like drawing ideas, or just why I think one my, or just why I think of my career in the future. Where do you see yourself in the future? Um, well, it's kind of difficult. Um, even though I don't want to sound like I'm dismissing all my followers, because holy crap, I'm nearly at four thousand followers on Twitter. I am absolutely amazed I managed to make it even to that. Um, I don't see myself staying as a furry artist, at least not full-time. I do plan to keep drawing and keep drawing because I do enjoy doing it. I enjoy all the support I get from it. But I think realistically, I don't see myself doing it full-time and making a living off of it. Um... Mainly because, especially recently, I've been getting lots of art block and, like, burnouts or whatever. So it's like, well, I can't exactly make money if I don't feel like drawing all the time. So, what I see myself in the future, I'm kind of hoping that... Because I've been studying other mediums, like, uh, video editing and just photo editing, I suppose. Because <laughs> we both know I'm experienced in that now. Um... I've been thinking of both of those things, and I'm actually st currently studying graphic design. Uh, so, 
who knows, maybe in the future, if you work for a business, you might end up getting a logo or a background object designed by your favorite furry artist as well. <laughs> But that's kind of what I'm hoping for the future. I get like a full, I get like a full time professional thing like that, and then like drawing would be like my side deal, you know, like like kind of side side career almost, where it's like, oh yeah, this is what I do in my free time, and people support me for it. Um, but that's kind of what I'm hoping the future. That'll be my ideal future, is is getting the big big professional job and then having this fun thing to do on the side as well. And my final question for you is. Do you know how to spell Mrs. Busy? Uh, M I S S I S S I P I. Wait, Miss is it? P yeah, I think I did it right. You forgot a P. I'm sorry. There's two P's. Uh huh. Oh fuck off! Please tell me that's like a. Please tell me that's like a a Native American origin origin name because if that's a if that's like an english name like if, it, if like a white if an english white guy said, uh, made that well, i don't know what the hell he was on <laughs> make you putting two p's in there <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you I, um, I i can't spell mississippi i don't even know where it is uh is it a river or state it's a river and a state actually oh god okay <laughs> oh i failed but before I failed I forget, you. Uh -huh. is, is there any final thoughts you have or anything you want your fans to know about you? Uh, well, uh, well, I you you guys have now heard my voice for the first time, um, uh, so this must be weird for everyone. Uh, I am a guy. Um, I, uh, I am Irish, but I have this weird, uh, American Irish accent almost. So, uh. You guys have proof of that now. You still won't get to see my face, but you hear my voice. But thank you all for supporting me. It honestly means so much that you guys like my stuff so much that you want to follow. And especially you patrons who like my stuff so much that they want to throw money at me. Uh, it, I, can't, I can't thank everyone enough. And also thank you, uh, Tippy, for interviewing me because this has been a surreal experience being interviewed for my art um and i never thought all i could say is just thank you to everyone <laughs> well thank you very much for being on the show because it has been quite a very long time since i've ever done one of these but everyone if you really like well if you really like r63 and you like rj or you just like <laughs> fat cellulite acid just in general well i have a place for you it's at oyster catcher on twitter or check them out on fur affinity i'm not on deviantart apparently or on e6 and maybe if you dig deep enough you'll find some of those cool photo morphs but everyone i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you guys in the next goodbye